South Sudanese Civil War Course of the Conflict Initial Mutiny, 2013 It began on the evening of Sunday, December 15, 2013, at the meeting of the National Liberation Council in the Nyakaran neighborhood of Juba, South Sudan's capital, when opposition leaders Dr. Rik Makar, Pagan Amam and Rebecca Nyamdang voted to boycott the meeting. The South Sudanese Sudan Tribune reported clashes breaking out in the Munuki neighborhood late on 14 December in Juba between members of the Presidential Guard. Kier also claimed that the fighting began when unidentified uniformed personnel started shooting at a meeting of the SPLM. Former Minister of Higher Education Peter Adwoke said that on the evening 15 December after the meeting of the National Liberation Council had failed, Kier told Major General Mariel Sianoun to disarm his soldiers of the Tiger Battalion, which he did. Adwoke then controversially claims that the officer in charge of the weapons stores, opened them and rearmed only the Dinka soldiers. A newer soldier passing by questioned this in a fistfight then ensued between the two and attracted the attention of the commander and his deputy to the scene. Unable to calm the situation, more soldiers got involved and raided the stores. It culminated in the newer soldiers taking control of the military headquarters. The next morning, he says that Sudan People's Liberation Army, SPLA, Reinforcements arrived and dislodged the mutineers. He then explained standard procedure military doctrine dictates that once a contingent of mutinous troops have been dislodged, appeal is made for their surrender and then disarmed. Those who remained loyal, to the president, are also disarmed to prevent bad blood. The loyal troops of Tiger, hailing mainly from Warap and Awail, have not been disarmed. In fact, they are the ones rampaging Juba, looting and shooting to kill any newer in the residential neighborhoods. Adwoke was then placed on a list of wanted politicians, to which he said this may be my last contribution, because, as I said, I'm waiting for the police in order to join my colleagues in detention. On Christmas Day, five days after his controversial publication, Adwoke was arrested and held for two days. He was later detained at the Juba airport when attempting to leave the country. His passport was also confiscated. The military headquarters near Juba University was then attacked with fighting continuing throughout the night. The next day heavy gunfire and mortar fire were reported, and UNMIS announced that hundreds of civilians sought refuge inside its facilities. Aguirre said that some military installations had been attacked but that the army is in full control of Juba, that the tense situation was unlikely to deteriorate, and an investigation was underway. Several people were also injured during the fighting. Juba International Airport was closed indefinitely. Kenyan Airlines Fly 540 and Kenya Airways indefinitely suspended flights to Juba after the airport closed. A dusk to dawn curfew was imposed until further notice. State-owned SSTV went off air for several hours. When it returned to broadcasting, it aired a message by President Salva Kiir. The dissident group was said to include Sudan People's Liberation Movement, SPLM, founder John Garong's widow. Rebecca Garong. Foreign Minister Barnaba Mariel Benjamin claimed that those that were a part of the coup were disgruntled soldiers and politicians led by Mocker and that at least 10 people were confirmed to have been detained, seven were confirmed as former ministers including former finance minister Kosti Manib and Pagan Amam was later reported to be held in house arrest. Other arrests included those of Kier's critics. Information Minister Michael McAuluth claimed that Mocker had left Juba with some soldiers and stolen cattle. President Salva Kier spoke on national television on 16 of December, having abandoned his signature suit and cowboy hat for military fatigues, and said, while surrounded by government officials, that the coup had been foiled and that it was orchestrated by a group of soldiers allied with the former vice president. On 21st of December, the government announced its unconditional readiness to hold peace talks with any rebel group, including Mocker in a Christmas message. Kier warned of the fighting becoming a tribal conflict. Chief Whip and MP from the large state of Eastern Equatoria, Tuluyo Odangyahu, announced his support for Kier. The SPLM affiliated youth group condemned the attempted overthrow of Kier. Mocker spoke for the first time since the crisis began on 18 December, in which he said he was not aware of any coup attempt, but instead blamed Kier for fabricating such allegations of a coup in order to settle political scores and target political opponents. He accused Kier of inciting ethnic tensions to achieve his ends. He also said the violence was started by the presidential guard which was founded by Kier and told to report directly to him instead of the military. He refused to deny or acknowledge support for Gadet but that the rebels are acting in the right direction. On 22 December, 
Mocker said he wanted to be the leader of the country and that his forces would maintain control of the country's oil fields. Former Undersecretary of Culture, Yach Matat Yach, warned that the violence could escalate into tragic acts of ethnic cleansing. Beginning of Rebellion, 2013-14 Fighting also occurred near the presidential palace and other areas of Juba. Ah Yach Bolin, a doctor at a military hospital, said that so far, we have lost seven soldiers who died while they were waiting for medical attention and a further 59 who were killed outside. The International Crisis Group, ICG, also reported that Mocker's house had been bombarded and surrounded, including with tanks, while parts of Juba have been reduced to rubble. The local radio Tamazuch suggested UNMIS were absent from the streets in Juba and that December 2013's president of the UN Security Council had announced that the peacekeepers would not intervene in the fighting. A semblance of calm returned to Juba by 18th of December. The UN reported that 13,000 people were taking refuge from the fighting in its two compounds in Juba. Violence in Juba reportedly calmed, though there were unconfirmed reports of several students killed by security personnel at Juba University on 18th of December. On February 10, 2014, the UN base in Juba was surrounded by armed government troops and policemen, who demanded that the UN surrender newer civilians sheltering there. The UN announced that thousands of people had sought refuge within the UN's compounds. Two Indian peacekeepers were killed helping to protect 36 civilians in Akobo, Jonglei, when they were attacked by about 2,000 armed newer youths. The attackers were apparently intending to kill the civilians sheltering at the UN base, in a move condemned by the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. About 200 employees of petroleum operators, of which the three largest were China National Petroleum Corps. ONGCB and Petronas, sought refuge at an UN compound in Bensha. This followed the deaths of 16 such workers, five workers at a field in Unity State on 18 December and another 11 at the Far Jaff field the next day. Government soldiers then took control of the fields and said that production continued normally. The rebels had reportedly taken over at least some of the country's oil fields amidst fears of Sudan intervening in the country. In the north of Unity, Paryang County is home to the Rung Dinka the only Dinka group in the state. Fighting broke out in Paryang on 20th of December, when some SPLA troops defected to the rebels. On 24th of December, an estimated 400 defectors moved southwards from Jaw, the SPLA's northernmost operating base towards positions held by SPLA forces loyal to Kuangchal. As of 26th of December, the SPLA claimed they had destroyed 37 rebel vehicles in Paryang County, which remains in the hands of the SPLA. Following calls from the government of South Sudan, Uganda deployed its troops to Juba to assist in securing the airport and evacuating Ugandan citizens. On 21 December a flight of three U.S. Air Force V-22 Osprey aircraft en route to evacuate U.S. nationals from Bor took small arms fire from the ground, injuring four Navy SEALs. South Sudan blamed the rebels for the incident. A second evacuation attempt by four UN and civilian helicopters succeeded in evacuating about 15 U.S. nationals, Sudanese Americans and those working in humanitarian operations, from the United Nations base in Bor on 22nd of December. Although the base was surrounded by 2,000 armed youths, a rebel commander had promised safe passage for the evacuation. In total 380 officials and private citizens as well as about 300 foreign citizens were flown to Nairobi. The United States military announced a repositioning of its forces in Africa to prepare for possible further evacuations as the United Nations warned of the planned strikes. Many of these reports have come from the hundreds of foreign oil company employees gathered at the airport to leave. Five Ugandan and ten Kenyan citizens were also evacuated from Bor and then Juba before leaving the country. The Kenyan government said that there were 30,000 of its nationals in the country and that 10,000 had applied for emergency documents. On December 22, 2013, U.S. and Nigerian envoys were on their way to Juba to try to negotiate a solution. The U.S. envoy to the country, Donald Booth, saying that having spoken to CARE, the latter was committed to talks with Mocker without preconditions. Mocker said that the rebel side was ready for talks that could possibly occur in Ethiopia. He said he wanted free and fair elections and that it is best if Kier leaves. His conditions for talks were that his comrades, including Rebecca Girong and Pagan Amum, be released from detention to be evacuated to Addis Ababa. Information Minister McLee said those involved in the coup would not be released and dismissed claim that the rebels had taken the major oil fields. 
fighting had spread to Bor by 17th of December, where three people had died and over 1,000 people sought refuge in the UN base. On December 19, 2013, newer soldiers led by Peter Gadet, the defected former 8th Division commander, claimed control of Bor, while Aguirre admitted that the army lost control of Bor. Ethnically targeted violence was also reported and the Dinka feared a repeat of the Bor massacre. On 23 December, Aguirre said the army was on its way to Zhongli and unity to retake territory. On 24 December, the government of South Sudan claimed to have recaptured Bor. Most of Gadet's troops had left by the end of the day. On 27 December, Makar condemned Ugandan interference, claimed Ugandan air forces bombed their positions in Bor. There was also tension at the UN compound in the city as armed fighters had entered it and about 17,000 civilians seeking protection were at the location. The UN also reported that their base was being reinforced with additional protective barriers, including the area hosting the displaced civilians. On 29 December, a UN helicopter spotted a group of armed youths 50 kilometers, 31 miles, from Bor but could not confirm their numbers. On 30 December, South Sudanese government troops clashed with ethnic white army militiamen and other rebel factions loyal to Makar late on Monday near Bor. By 31 December, the rebels were reaching the center of Bor and by 2 January, Nyal admitted government withdrawal from the city and care declared a state of emergency in unity in Zhongle states, where rebels controlled the capitals. On 4 January intense battles involving tanks and artillery were reported on the outskirts of Bor, which by this time had changed hands three times since fighting in as many weeks. Rebels claim that a South Sudanese army general has been killed in the fighting, as his convoy approaching Bor was ambushed. The SPLA brought large numbers of reinforcements bringing the total SPLA troops 25 kilometers, 16 miles, Bor close to 2,000. On 25 December, fighting continued in Malakal, according to Atani, who added that the oil fields were secured and denied rebels had taken over the city. On 27 December, the army said it had taken back full control of Malakal, the administrative center of Upper Nile, a state which currently supplied all of South Sudan's crude oil, after fighting shut down oil fields in other areas. By February 2014, the UN compound in Malakal housed around 20,000 people who had fled the conflict. Rebel forces claimed to have recaptured Malakal from the army, while army forces claimed to have held the city after heavy fighting. The UNMIS reported that on 14 January heavy fighting broke out near the UN compound in Malakal. One civilian was killed and dozens of civilians were wounded in that attack. Civilians emptied out of the town, and at least 200 drowned when their overcrowded boat sank as they tried to flee across the Nile. On 15 January, Fighting continued in the streets of Malakal with both sides claiming to control the town. On February 18, 2014, fighting between members of various ethnicities broke out within the UN mission in the capital city of Upper Nile State, Malakal, resulting in 10 deaths. In Bensha, capital of Unity State, SPLA 4th Division divided along factional lines with troops, including Division Commander James Kowang, clashed with loyal troops who retreated from their barracks on December 20, 2013. The next day, Kuang announced allegiance to Makar and declared an interim government of the state and state governor Nugan Manchual fled Mam County. The loyal soldiers retreated to the outlying Abayam Nam County and were reinforced by Western Bar Al Ghazal's 5th Division and the Northern Bar Al Ghazal's 3rd Division to take back Bencha. South Sudan Liberation Movement, SSLA, militia forces, led by the Bul Nur commander Matthew Puliang, decided to support them. By 27 December, a combined force of SSLA and SPLA seized Mam, 90 kilometers from Bensha, on 29 December. Peter Dock, the rebel commander in Mam, announced that he fled the town on 7 January. Around January 8, 2014, the SPLA forces advanced on Bensha, which had been mostly evacuated, securing the city on January 10, 2014. Peace Talks and Rebel Split, 2014-15 Negotiations between both sides were mediated by AGAT Plus, which includes the eight regional nations as well as the African Union, United Nations, China, the EU, USA, UK and Norway. In order to ensure a stronger negotiating position, South Sudanese troops fighting alongside Ugandan troops retook every town held by the rebels, including Bor on 18th of January and Malakal on 20th of January. Government troops were assisted by Ugandan troops, 
against the wishes of Igat who feared a wider regional conflict. Uganda announced they had joined the fight in January after previously denying it, saying the troops were to only to evacuate Ugandan nationals. On January 23, 2014, representatives of the government of South Sudan and representatives of rebel leader Rik Maka reached a ceasefire agreement in Ethiopia. The deal also stipulated that 11 officials close to rebel leader Makar should be released. Only a few days later, the Red Bulls accused that a government takeover of Lear was a deliberate attempt to sabotage the second round of talks that were to start later in February. The rebels threatened to boycott the second round talks, demanding the release of four remaining political prisoners and the withdrawal of Ugandan troops. Later in February, the rebels attacked the strategic government controlled Malakal and the government admitted withdrawal and then, in March, the rebels admitted withdrawal, changing hands for the fifth time. In April, Red Bulls claimed once again to have seized Bencha and by 19th of April South Sudan's army admitted to have lost communication with commanders battling in Unity State. The 2014 Bencha massacre occurred on 15th of April in Bencha when more than 200 civilians, all said to have been Dinkas, were massacred by newer rebels. A mosque, hospital, and church were targeted where civilians had sought refuge from the fighting. After the fall of Bencha, Salva Kiir sacked Army Chief James Hothmai and replaced him with Paul Malong Awen. In May 2014, the government signed a peace agreement called the Greater Pibber Administrative Area Peace Agreement with the largely Merle Group, the Cobra faction of the South Sudan Democratic Movement, led by David Yao Yao. As part of the agreement, a semi-autonomous area called the Greater Pibber Administrative Area was created to increase the minority populations within its borders and David Yao Yao was appointed chief administrator, equivalent to state governor. In February 2015, a largely Merle group, unhappy with the agreement with the government, split off from the Kober faction to form the Greater Pibber Forces and declared allegiance to Makar. One of their disagreements with the government was the alleged provoking of the Merle to fight against anti-government newer groups in Zhang Lei. In April 2016, Merle fighters in South Sudan crossed over to Gambla in Ethiopia and killed more than 200 people, stole 2,000 cattle and kidnapped more than 100 children from the newer tribe. On May 9, 2014, President Salva Kiir and Rik Makar signed the second ceasefire in Addis Ababa, a one-page agreement recommitting to the first ceasefire. Hostilities were to end in 24 hours while a permanent ceasefire would be worked on and it promised to open humanitarian corridors and allow 30 days of tranquility so farmers can sow crops and prevent famine. Hours after the ceasefire was to be in effect, both sides accused each other of violating the ceasefire. On June 11, 2014, both parties agreed to begin talks on the formation of a transitional government within 60 days and to a third ceasefire refraining from combat during this period. However, the talks collapsed as both sides boycotted the talks, and by 16th of June, the ceasefire was reported to have been violated. In August 2014, Karen leaders of South Sudan's neighboring states signed a roadmap leading to a transitional government of national unity. Makara refuses to sign up accusing leaders in the IGAT, a regional group involved in the negotiations, of tilting the process in favor of care. In November 2014, both parties renew the much-broken ceasefire and IGAT mediators give them 15 days to reach a power-sharing deal, threatening sanctions if they fail. This third ceasefire breaks down 24 hours later with fighting in the oil-rich north. In January 2015, rival factions sign a reunification agreement in Arusha, Tanzania, but fighting continued. In February 2015, Kieran Mocker signed a document on areas of agreement for a future transitional government of national unity and recommitted themselves to the ceasefire. The talks later collapsed and fighting broke out in March. Johnson Alani led a militia that planned to be integrated into the SPLM government forces, but he switched to oppose the government when the government announced plans to carve up new states which the Shiluk felt was to divide their homeland. On May 16, 2015, Alani's militia and elements of the SPLMIO captured Upper Nile's capital, Malakal, as well as Anak Dyer and areas around Kodak. His Shiluk militia group now called itself the Aglek Forces. The group said they want to run their affairs independently from others in Upper Nile State, and SPLMIO backed away from claims that it is in charge of Alani's group and stated that Alani's interests simply coincides with theirs. SPLMIO said they understood the feeling from the Shiluk community that they wanted a level of independence and that that was the reason the SPLMIO last year created Fashoda State for the Shiluk Kingdom and appointed Tiwa Giguet, a Shiluk, as governor. On August 11, 2015, Gabriel Tang, Gathoth Kuoth, the former SPLMIO logistics chief, 
and rebel commander Peter Gadet, announced that they and other powerful commanders had split from Reichmacher, and rejected ongoing peace talks, announcing that they would now combat Reichmacher's forces in addition to government forces. Gathoth Gottguoth states he wishes for a president who is neither Dinka nor Neuer and intended to register his group as a political group called the Federal Democratic Party and that their forces would be called the South Sudan National Army. Compromise Peace Agreement and Second Juba Clashes, 2015-16 in late August 2015, Salva Kiir signed a peace agreement previously signed by Riek Macher called the Compromise Peace Agreement mediated by Igad Plus. The agreement would make Riek Macher the vice president again. The agreement established the Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission, JMEC, responsible for monitoring and overseeing implementation of the agreement. On October 20, 2015, Uganda announced that it will voluntarily withdraw its soldiers from South Sudan, in accordance to that peace agreement. In January 2016, David Yaya dissolved the Cobra faction of the South Sudan Democratic Movement and joined the SPLM. In January Gathoth Gottguoth joined with the government but was dismissed by his Federal Democratic Party for doing so. In April 2016, as part of the peace deal, Makara returned to Juba with troops loyal to him and was sworn in as vice president. On Christmas Eve 2015, Salva Kiir announced he was going forward with a plan to increase the number of states from 10 to 28 and then, five days later, swore in all new governors appointed by him and considered loyal to him. The new borders give Kiir's Dinkas a majority in strategic locations. Some observers feel that the government is holding on to the peace deal to maintain international aid while backing campaigns to increase Dinka control over land and resources traditionally held by other groups. As the predominantly Shiluk Aglek forces joined, in July 2016, with the SPLMIO, which entered the peace agreement with the government, some Shiluk felt dissatisfied. After the establishment of the new states, a new group made up of mostly Shiluk formed the Tiger Faction New Forces, TFNF, in October 2015, led by General Ioannis Okiek. They rejected joining the SPLMIO or the peace agreement and called for the restoration of the original 1956 borders of the Shiluk territories. When Dinka cattle herders, allegedly backed by the SPLA, occupied farmland, Azande U throws up into militias mostly with the Arrow Boys, whose leader Alfred Karabafuchio Anyang declared allegiance to SPLMIO and claimed to have occupied parts of western Equatoria. A new rebel faction calling itself the South Sudan Federal Democratic Party, different from but related to the larger similarly named rebel faction led by Peter Gadet, Gabriel Chang and Gathoth Gatkuoth, made up mostly of Lodico people formed during this time due to growing perceptions of mistreatment by the Dinka government and took over a SPLA outpost in eastern Equatoria. In February 2016, Dinka SPLA soldiers attacked a UN camp targeting Newer and Shiluk who accused the government of annexing parts of their ancestral land. About a year after the peace agreement was signed, groups of ethnic Dinka youth in the SPLA targeted members of the Fertitan Wow, killing dozens and forcing more than 120,000 to flee their homes. As a result, local Fertit tribal militias and groups allied with the SPLMIO rose in rebellion, causing heavy clashes in the originally relatively peaceful Wow state which continued for months. Violence erupted in July 2016 after an attack outside of where President Kiir and Riek Maka were meeting in Juba. Fighting spread throughout the city. Over 300 people were killed and over 40 people were injured, including civilians. In the following week, 26,000 fled to neighboring Uganda. Indian Air Force evacuated Indian citizens from the country under Operation Songkit Motion. A spokesman for Riek Makar announced that South Sudan was back to war and that opposition forces based in areas of Juba had been attacked by forces loyal to the president. Fighting involving heavy machine guns, mortars and tanks was reported in several parts of Juba on 10 July. Gun battles broke out near the airport and a UN base forcing the airport to close for safety reasons. President Salva Kiir and First Vice President Riek Makar ordered a ceasefire after days of intense violence. Makar fled Juba after the clashes. After a 48-hour ultimatum given by Kiir for Makar to return to Juba to progress with the peace agreement talks passed, the SPLAIO in Juba appointed lead negotiator Tabin Dengai to replace Makar and the government accepted him as acting vice president. Makar said any talks would be illegal because Makar had previously fired Guy. Makar, with assistance from the UN, went to exile, first to Kinshasa then to Sudan and then to South Africa, where he was allegedly kept in house arrest.
Renewed Conflict and Rebel Infighting, 2016-17 In September 2016, Mocker announced a call for armed struggle against Karen in November, he said SPLMIO would not participate in a workshop organized by JMEC, saying the peace agreement needs to be revised. In September, Lam Akal, leader of the largest opposition party, Democratic Change, announced a new faction called the National Democratic Movement, NDM, to overthrow Kher. Ioannis Okiek, who led the largely Shiluk Tiger faction New Forces, which split from Ioannis Aglek forces, joined the predominantly Shiluk NDM as Deputy Chief of General Staff. In the same month, the Cobra faction of the South Sudan Democratic Movement, now led by Khalid Boutros declared war against the government. On the international front, the African Union, after the Juba clashes, backed plans for the deployment of troops from regional nations with a strong mandate similar to that of the United Nations Force Intervention Brigade that swiftly defeated the M23 rebels in the Democratic Republic of Congo as UN troops presently within the country have struggled to protect civilians. In August 2016, the UN Security Council authorized such a force for Juba. The government initially opposed the move claiming a violation of sovereignty. With a resolution threatening an arms embargo if it blocked the new deployment, the government accepted the move with conditions such as the troops not being from neighboring countries, claiming they have interests at stake. They also accepted a hybrid court to investigate war crimes. The U.S. pushed for an arms embargo and sanctions on Mocker and Army Chief Paul Malong Ewan through the Security Council, but it failed to receive enough votes to pass in December 2016. After an independent report into a Mrs. failure to protect civilians in the Juba clashes, Secretary General Ban Sak, the commander of the UN Force Lieutenant General Johnson Moko Akamani on the Iki in November and then the General's native Kenya declared that it would pull out of the key role it plays in the peace process and withdrew its more than 1,000 peacekeepers from on miss before sending the troops back in with the start of the new UN Secretary General's tenure. On April 30, 2017, the first batch of the Regional Protection Force arrived under Brigadier General Jean Mapensi of Rwanda with the first phase of troops arriving in August. Among regional powers, Kier met, in January 2017, with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi who also met with Kier's ally Ugandan President Museveni. Egypt had previously rejected the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam that Egypt feels would diminish its share of the Nile River and Ethiopian Prime Minister. Haile Mariam Dessaline had accused Egyptian institutions of supporting terrorist groups in Ethiopia. SPLMIO alleged that a dirty deal was struck between Kir and Egypt against Ethiopia while Kir denied any diplomatic row. SPLMIO accused the Egyptian Air Force of bombing their positions on February 4, 2017 while Egypt denied it. As a result of Sudan's effective counterinsurgency strategy in the war in Darfur, the biggest rebel faction, the Justice and Equality Movement, JEM, retreated to South Sudan and became involved in mercenary and criminal activities according to a UN report. SPLMIO accused JEM as well as another rebel group in Sudan, SPLM North of joining the conflict on the side of Juba. Since the July clashes, the fighting spread from the greater Upper Nile to include the previously safe haven of Equatoria, where the bulk of SPLMIO forces went for shelter from the clashes in Juba, located in Equatoria. As Equatoria is the agricultural belt of the country, the number of people facing starvation soared to 6 million. In November 2016, SPLMIO claimed to have taken of the towns Bazi, Morobo, and Kulyuk. While the rebels were mostly in retreat in the Upper Nile Front, the rebels had gained ground on the Equatorian Front where the SPLA was mostly restricted to its garrisons. This was attributed to local self-defense militias becoming increasingly integrated in the depopulation of towns resulting in the army having fewer supplies even while the rebels were already adapted to the bush. However, after the fall of the main rebel headquarters of Bagok in the summer, the southern headquarters in Lhasa fell on December 18, 2017. In late May, Kier declared a unilateral ceasefire which was taken with suspicion by others as it came after the late April government offensive that retook much territory and before the rainy season that would have anyway reduced fighting. Three days after the government retook Lhasa it signed another ceasefire with the rebels in December 2017. The other major front of the conflict remained the Greater Upper Nile, where government forces mostly fought John Alini's SPLAIO allied AGLEC forces. In a study of casualties up to early 2018, the deaths from violence peaked during this time between 2016 to 2017. In October 2016, the rebels attempted to take Malakalan by January 2017. Fighting there had led to civilians deserting the country's second largest city. In fighting in the Bar al Ghazal region, pro government militia Mathiang Eniwa attacked while killing up to 50 civilians in April 2017. In the same month, 
SPOAIO captured Raja, the capital of Lowell State, while State Governor Hassan claimed the city was immediately retaken. A counteroffensive by the government starting in late April 2017 reversed most rebel gains, captured the capital of the Shiluk Kingdom, Kodak, from Alani and closed the Nanpagak which had been the SPLAIO headquarters since 2014. In July 2017, SPLA along with forces loyal to Tab and Dangai took over the rebel-held town of Mewet. The government took over Pagak in August 2017 while the Ayo rebels still held territory in traditional newer areas of Panyijar country in Unity State and rural areas of Jongle and Akobo State. SPLA Ayo counterattacked Tab and Dangai's SPLA Ayo force in an attempt to retake Pagak. An additional dimension of the conflict became the fighting between the opposition loyal to Makar and those supporting Tabandang, largely within the newer majority former state of unity. Observers felt that Kir had given up on negotiations by talking with Tabandang instead of Makar during the peace talks, as Taban is seen by many in the opposition as a traitor. As part of the national dialogue initiated by Kir in December 2016 where any former rebels who return to the capital will be given amnesty, about a dozen SPLMIO officials defected to the government in January 2017. Gabriel Tang, who was one of the generals to have defected from Makar during the peace talks in 2015, now allied with Lamakal's largely Shiluk and Yemen became its chief of staff. In January 2017 Tang was killed in clashes with the SPLMIO allied Aglek forces led by John Nalani, a move the SPLMIO proclaimed as a warning to rival rebel factions. Two days later, Alani's forces ambushed and killed Yoani's Okiek, destroying the Tiger faction new forces. In February 2017, Deputy Head of Logistics Lt. Gen. Thomas Cirillo Swaka resigned, accusing Kier of ethnic bias. This led to a series of high-ranking resignations, including Minister of Labor Lt. Gen. Gabriel Duoplam who also pledged allegiance to Makar. Swaka formed a new rebel group called the National Salvation Front, NAS or NSF, in March 2017. In March 2017, Cirillo, a Bari from Equatoria, got additional support as SPLMIO's Western Bar Al Guzzel commander, Fais Ismail Futur, resigned to join NAS while there are reports of six SPLMIO shadow governors from Equatoria defecting to NAS. In the same month, head of the Cobra faction Khalid Boutros dissolved the Cobra faction and merged it with General Thomas Cirillo's NAS and claimed opposition groups are in consultation to unite their ranks. In July 2017, John Kenyi Laburon, SPLAIO's commander of Central Equatoria State switched to join NAS, claiming favoritism towards newers in SPLAIO and then as NAS general in the same month, fought with SPLAIO in Central Equatoria in the first clashes between the two groups. By November 2017, NAS captured areas in Kajokaji from SPLMIO, before both groups were routed by the government. With broad support at its inception, by 2018, many had come to view NAS as simply the Bari. By March 2018, nine opposition groups, including NAS, NDM, SSPA and SSLM but notably not including SPLMIO, joined to form the South Sudan Opposition Alliance to collectively negotiate with the government. Split among ruling Dinka and 2018 Peace Agreement, 2017-2018 Cracks were appearing along clan lines among the ruling Dinka. Kier's Dinka of Warap were in a feud with the Dinka of Palm along Awan's Awail, who contributed the bulk of the government's fighting force in the war. Around this time, the largely Dinka South Sudan Patriotic Army, SSBA, was formed in northern Bar el Ghazal, with the backing of powerful figures such as former presidential advisor Costello Girong Ring and allegedly Malong Awan. In May 2017, Kier reduced the power of the chief of staff position and fired its powerful Dinka nationalist Malong Awan and replaced him with General James Iyong Gamaat, who is not a Dinka but a Luo. Awan left Jibo with most of his Mathiang Aniwan militia while other militia members reportedly joined SSPA. By the end of 2017, SSPA had claimed to have captured territory around Awail and was seen as one of the biggest threats to Juba. A1 was accused of plotting a rebellion and was detained but then released following pressure from the Dinka lobbying group, the Dinka Council of Elders. In April 2018, A1 announced the launch of a rebel group named South Sudan United Front, SSUF, which claimed to push for federalism. The United States, after failing in 2016, put addition pressure on Juba by successfully passing an arms embargo on South Sudan in July 2018 through UN Security Council with Russia and China abstaining from voting this time. Additionally, 
with neighboring Sudan facing economic troubles and relying on revenue from transporting oil from South Sudan, the Sudanese government, with a mix of incentives and coercion, brought Kiran SPLAIO to hold talks in Khartoum. In June 2018, they signed another ceasefire where they agreed to form a transitional government for the 36 months leading to national elections and to African Union and Igad peacekeepers to deploy to South Sudan and state boundaries would be drawn by commission chaired by a non-South Sudanese. This ceasefire was violated just a few hours after coming into effect, when pro-government forces attacked rebels in Wow State. SPLMIA protested when the parliament, where the president's party holds a majority of seats, extended the president's term and that of other officials by three years. However, they eventually agreed to share power again with Makar to be one of five vice presidents and the 550-seat parliament to be divided with 332 going to Kerr's faction, 128 to Makar's group and the rest to other groups. The South Sudan Opposition Alliance made up of most of the rest of the rebelling militias, rejected the deal citing their small share in the power-sharing agreement. As part of amnesty offered to groups following the peace deal, in August 2018, Brigadier General Chan Garong, claiming to be lead a group of rebel soldiers from Malang's SSUF, came back to the government along with 300 rebel soldiers in what was seen as a weakening of SSUF.